shading is something that confuses a lot of people. In this video, I'll try my best to clear things up. I'll show practical examples, like a branch over a solar panel, an electric cable or even a chimney. And I'll also show you how a bypass diode works in this solar panel. And you might not expect how this 100 watt solar panel performs in the shade. This is a 425 watt solar panel. Now it's producing 9.5 amps at 28 volts for a total power of 270 watts. Let's see what happens if we put a branch in front of the solar panel. The current is now reduced to 7.8 amps, but the voltage stays the same at 28 volts. So we now have a power of, one, of 200 watts. We can see that no bypass diode has been activated. Let's simulate a cable on top of the solar panel by using this stick. The current is now reduced to 8.5 amps and we still have 28 volts. So we have a power of 240 watts. We can see this didn't reduce the power a lot. And finally, let's see what a chimney does with the output power. The chimney will be simulated by this cardboard. We can see the current immediately drops to 0.6 amps. So that means the bypass diode will soon activate. We can see the voltage is now dropping because the MPPT is searching for the new maximum power point. And the current is slightly increasing to 4 amps now. 6 amps. And the voltage has been stable now at 20 volts. That means one third of the panel is deactivated. And we now have a final current of 8.6 amps, 8.7 amps for a total of 170 watts. So there's about 100 watts missing from the solar panel at the moment. This is a solar panel that's using half cut cells. These are common in modern installs and have three bypass diode sections. So it's dividing the panel in three uh, equal sections. This is the first, we have the second, and the third section. I'm going to explain how the bypass diode works with two examples. The first example is to shade a small section of a cell. We now have 9 amps and 30 volts for a total of 260 watts. Let's now shade a part of the cell. And the current is now reduced to 5 amps. So me shading the panel is restricting the flow of current through the whole panel. So it's dragging down the current of the panel. And the second example, if we shade the a whole section of the panel, so the bypass diode will activate. Because we shaded an entire cell, the current is now dropped to almost zero. And the voltage of the panel is now only uh, 20 volts, which is reduced from 30 volts. So that means a bypass diode has been activated. So the bypass diode uh, lets the panel skip a certain section of it. So now the first section has been skipped, but the second and the third section is still working. 
So let's break down what's happening. A solar panel is made up of solar cells connected in series. And when you connect cells in series, the voltage adds up. And the current stays the same. This 425 watt solar panel has 108 cells. Divided into 6 groups of 18 cells. This is one group of 18 cells. And it's in series with the second group. And in series with the third group. So we have 10 volts, another 10 volts, and another 10 volts for a total of 30 volts. Then we have the other half of the panel, which is an exact copy of the top. So 10 volts, 10 volts, and 10 volts. And because the bottom ones are in parallel, the whole panel is 30 volts. This section is 10 volts and 5 amps. If we put these together in series, we get 30 volts at 5 amps. So that's this part of the panel. And then we have the lower part, which is an exact copy of this part. And we get another 30 volts at 5 amps. These are connected in parallel. So this whole panel is 30 volts at 10 amps. Now what happens if I shade this cell? The current output dropped to 5 amps and 30 volts for a total of 150 watts, which you can see here. The bypass diode did not kick in because we still had 30 volts. So this bypass diode did not work. And in the second example, I shaded this part and we saw the output dropped to 10 amps and 20 volts. We see 20 volts and that means the bypass diode has been activated and we had an output of 200 watts. This is the bypass diode that has been activated. So it's better to shade an entire section, so the bypass diode gets activated, than to shade a single cell. Now, if you have three of these panels in series, we will get 90 volts, because every panel is 30 volts and 10 amps, and in a series string, the voltages add up and the current stays the same. So we get 90 volts and 10 amps for 900 watts in total. Now, if we just shade a single cell, like we saw in the first example, we will get 30 volts because the bypass diode will not kick in. But the current has been reduced to 5 amps. This panel will stay the same as well as the third panel. But because we shaded one panel, the current has been reduced. And in a series string, the output will be the lowest of the series string, which is 5 amps. So we still have 90 volts, but only 5 amps, and that gives us 450 watts. You can take a look at your solar panels, bus bars, and see how the current flows through your panel. Sunlight will increase the current, while the voltage is related to the cell temperature. When one cell is shaded like this, current will flow back into the shaded cell, which will create a hotspot. This can damage the solar panel, and that's another reason for the bypass diodes. So the negative effects of hotspots are reduced. Now let's talk about the 100 watt solar panel I picked up for $55. As you can see, it comes with two PIBUS diodes. I didn't expect that the middle connection point is not connected. This means that the bypass diodes will not work if the panel is partially shaded. When I wire the 100 watt solar panel to the MPPT and then to the battery, we get 75 watts, so 4.5 amps 
and 16.6 volts. And when I shade one cell, you would expect the bypass diode to kick in. But what happens is that the current is dropping to zero. That's because normally a 100 watt solar panel has four rows of cells, but this one only has three. So it's impossible to have a middle point for the diode. This is the 100 watt panel that I got. As you can see, there are only three lines of solar cells. If we follow the bus bars, we can see that the power goes like this. So it's impossible to have a diode in the middle connected here. Now if we take a look at another 100 watt solar panel, we can see it has four rows of cells, which goes like this. And in this case, it is possible to have a diode connected like this. If I shade one cell in this panel, the entire panel will be bypassed. Because there is no bypass diode being activated. In this case, the two bypass diodes will be activated. And in this case, if I shade a single cell, this bypass diode will be activated, skipping this section of the panel. But the second section will still work. Now I have wired the panels in series. And now the voltage is 32 volts at 4.9 amps. So now I'll repeat the same test of shading one cell. And what we normally would expect is that the bypass diode of this single panel will activate. But since the middle point is not connected, it will bypass the whole first panel. I can already see the voltage dropped to 20 volts and now the MPPT is searching for the new maximum power point. The current is still 0.2 amps, but that will slowly increase. And we are back at 4.7 amps and the power of 72 watts coming from the panels. So the first panel is entirely bypassed. So if you have a 100 watt solar panel and you want to optimize them for shading, make sure they have four rows of cells. This panel only has three rows. And also open the back and see if the diode is connected to the middle point of the panel. So in conclusion, large panels like the 400 watt panel we saw before are split into multiple sections with bypass diodes. This is to optimize the power production in shading conditions. Shading a small area, like half a cell, can kill current without triggering any bypass diodes. Shading an entire section can activate the bypass diode, allowing current to bypass the shaded section and keep the power flowing. Small 100 watt solar panels may not have useful bypass diodes. In a series string, bypass diodes become much more important because they let the string keep producing power even if one panel is shaded. This was a complicated video. If you have questions, let me know in the comments. As usual, if you found this video helpful, please give it a like and consider subscribing for more videos like this. And I think you will like this video next. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one.